I just wonder how you kind of feel about getting ready to go into this season versus last season when you were banged up and everything, how you kind of feel and how excited you are. Uh, honestly, at this point, uh, last season, obviously I was uh, going through things with my knee, even a little bit of my collarbone. But at this point, I've, uh, I've been going at it really hard all summer. and I'm just ready to get out there, honestly, because I, I even talked about it last year getting out there, but I'm so excited, uh, honestly. Like, I just, it's kind of built up, and I'm just, I'm just working really hard in practice. Well, what do you feel like you can add then to the team if you are back 100% like you say? I think uh, a big thing is, is shooting. Um, but even that, just working hard on both ends of the ball, being a good leader um, on and off the floor uh, to, to all, the, all the freshmen coming in because I'm a sophomore and, uh, you know, I have a little bit of experience. So I feel like I can help in that department. All right, next up we'll go with John Hale with Courier Journal. Dante, you talk about the leadership there. You're kind of in this weird in-between spot where you are one of the few guys coming back, but you haven't played in a game. How do you balance those two things? And, and what can you still tell those young guys, even though you didn't play last year? Uh, I think I can share with them, like, what uh, Coach Cal expects, um, which is, like, pretty much just going hard, like, at all times and not really taking plays off. Um, I didn't play in the game, but I was always around it. Um, being literally right in the huddles, uh, just knowing what is expected. I feel like from that aspect, I can share with that and in practice. Uh, it, it's basically just a lot of small things I can share. And then when you did get to practice a little bit towards the end of last season, what did that do for your confidence in terms of comparing yourself against all those guys who are now, you know, hoping to get drafted in the next couple of months? It was good. Uh, at first, I was starting out a little slow just because I had the knee injury. So I wasn't as fast, like, or in shape as I am now just because I've been working at it and getting back into the right shape and even better, um, I believe. But um, it, it's done a lot of great things. And I'm just – I've been working hard all summer, and I can't wait to get out there. Next up, we'll go with Keith Taylor. Go ahead, Keith. Hey, Dante, how close were you to coming back last year? I know there were some times where there were some possibilities, but how close were you to actually coming back and playing? Uh, it was around the time that we were short players. Uh, I know the Tennessee game, they was mentioned uh, putting me in. Then uh, another big time was in Florida, uh, at Florida. Um, they mentioned about putting me in. Um, but, yeah, I'd say those two times was the two times I was like, okay, like I might check in. All right, next up, we'll go with John Wong. Go ahead, John. Hey, Dante, uh, you're a relatively young guy, and yet you faced a lot of adversity in these past couple of years, first with the injury and now with the COVID situation. What have you learned about yourself during those difficult times? Uh, I learned that I'm very resilient. Um, I've I'm not really going through anything like I've gone through the last two years. And I think, honestly, it's made me a stronger person. And that can only carry on, like, to the court. Um, and I think just just that is going to bring a lot of good things to come, even, like, on and off the court. So I'm, it, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. Yeah. You're also a Kentucky guy. I mean, the first uh, Kentucky recruit since I think 2013. Do you feel an added responsibility to kind of carry that mantle for all the Kentucky fans out there? I think I think uh, my my biggest goal is to go out there and work as hard as I can. I don't feel like there's any added pressure. I mean, you could say like there's added pressure, like you're from Kentucky, but. This is just this is where I want to be. This is um, this is this is the culture like I wanted to be in, and I'm ready to work my hardest, work my tail off, and uh, and, and just to get things done here. All right. Next up, we'll go with uh, Jerry Tipton with the Lexington Herald Leader. Jerry, I'm trying. There you go. I'm it. There you go. <laughs> Dante, when uh, when was the last time you actually played in a game, and how? Uh, do you think it would be to, you know, get back in a real game? Or is it like riding a bicycle? You know, you know how to ride it and you go. Um, 
last time I played in the game was like senior year, sometime in December, so like 2018. But uh, as far as coming back like a bicycle, um, I think this is another like this is kind of props to like the culture here. Uh, every practice is like a game. Like you're going against uh, five stars. You're going against like everybody. Like everybody's trying to get it. Everybody's hooping. Everybody's working hard. Like. A lot of games might be like that, but a lot of games aren't going to be like like that. Like these are all like high level players, and you got to work hard every day in practice. So um, I'm holding my own, and because of that, I'm uh, I'm going to be on prime shape for the games. And how would you compare the Dante, the player now, with the Dante people remember seeing in December of eighteen? Uh, he's better. All right, next up, we'll go with uh, Jeff Drummond. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, uh, Dante, kind of a, a two-part question for you. Uh, first of all, what, what have you seen from your new teammates uh, that, that you're getting used to uh, now? And the second part of that is it's kind of unusual for you, you know, just been here a year going into your second year, but you've almost been part of two completely different teams. Uh, with with Keon being the uh, one of the rare exceptions, uh, what's that been like? Uh, I didn't hear you. And can you re rephrase the question? Uh, the, the the first part was just what have you seen from your new teammates uh, so far? And the second part is you've you've kind of been part of, even though you've just been here, you know, into your second year, uh, a part of two completely entirely different rosters. Uh, what's it been like having to, you know, get to know a whole new group of guys uh, with the exception of really like Keon? Honestly, it's been good. I mean, obviously it's different. Um, just getting to know all the different personalities, all the different guys, but uh, that's the culture here. And that's what, what I've uh, kind of seen. I mean, like literally, what was it? February had a whole different team. Then you step on campus like June, July, and you're like, wow, like, there's 10 new guys. So that's just the culture. And uh, I mean, that's why it's so like, it's us, it's such a success here. Just like, in, you know what I'm saying? Just clockwork. All right. Uh, next up, we'll go with Jack Pilgrim and then Larry, I'll circle back to you. So Joel mentioned uh, Wednesday that there was like a buzz in the air. That this was a, that, that, he could kind of tell that this was a, a special team. I think Davion said, and, you know, kind of hinted at that as well. Um, you know, do you kind of get that same sense? What What do you think kind of, you know, what is that buzz? And, and do you think this team does have that uh, opportunity to be special? I think this team does have that. Um, honestly, I mean, you can see glimpses and just in practice of offense and defense, but a big thing is going to be our defense. Um, our defense is really, really, really good. And that's not even take away from our offense, but our defense is just there. And I feel like we're just going to keep growing and keep getting better uh, and just as the season progresses. Good, Jack. Yeah. All right, Larry, we're coming back to you. Go ahead, Larry. Dante, talk a little bit about, I know you probably haven't spent a lot of time with them yet, but kind of about your impressions of Coach Flint and Coach Lucas. Uh, you know, and, and Coach Flint, he's a very outgoing, he's a, he's a character, but um, he's very knowledgeable. And in the early stages of getting to know him, he's, he shares that knowledge. And that's a big thing, uh, being a hungry basketball player, uh, being a hungry mind, uh, wanting to get better. He's someone that's good, that's right there. And also, um, and saying the same thing for Coach Lucas, very knowledgeable, young. Um, you know, I'm just... I'm just glad like those kind of guys are uh, in our program and I'm glad I'm getting to know them more and more and I just can't wait to learn from them. All right, we're gonna circle back to Jerry and then John, I'll come back to you. Dante, if I heard you right, you said that uh, the adversity had made you a stronger person and that, that, that'll show itself on the court. How so? What will we see that will reflect that? I think just knowing, um, just knowing where I'm from, and then knowing <clears throat> I, I had a couple injuries. Obviously, uh, went through a lot of things, but 
just knowing like, you know, every day you got to like, it's almost like your life's on the line. Like that's kind of the mentality that I've got. Like my life is on the line every day. And if I don't give that kind of effort into it, then I'm not going to make it. Or say if the team doesn't do these type of things, like we won't be successful as a team. So just getting my mind in that kind of mental space um, has gotten me stronger and, you know, just more consistent in that, in that way. How much, just as a follow, how much uh, the knee injury, especially, but the shoulder, maybe show you how a basketball can be taken away from a person? And you should, I, that would be a cliche way to look at it. That it, it was something like that with you? Uh, I think I think early on that was that was very apparent. Just like because it can be taken away, and I wasn't. I still haven't been able to play any games since 2018, the end of 2018. So that's how easy like it can it can happen. But just the mindset, uh, I think, is going to be the big thing that uh, helps me. All right, John Hale, we're going to you, and then John Wong, I'll come back to you. I think I think all of us that watched you in high school would assume that you're probably maybe the best shooter on this team, if not one of them. Uh, who else on this roster can kind of compete with you in terms of shooting ability? Uh, I said it was BJ. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that can shoot. You got Cam, Terrence can shoot, Devin. I mean, I think, I think everybody can shoot. I'm very confident in the way I shoot. Um, but this team has a lot. This team has a lot of buckets. Like, Hi, John Wong, go with you, Dante. A lot of times, people who undergo these injuries, they say they come back stronger than ever before. How are you physically? Are you a hundred percent, a hundred and ten percent? Give us a uh, uh, give us a description of 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 your health right now. I mean, I, I'm better than ever. Honestly, uh, I remember I was working out last week. It's kind of funny. Um, I think I was doing squats or something. And uh, my uh, weight trainer is like, how's your knee? And I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, I just forgot. Like, I'm like, dang, like, I really, like, <laughs> like, that's just, that's that's the space I'm in right now. Like, I, I don't even think about it. Like, I'm ahead of where I was. I'm a lot better, a lot better space. It's It's going really well. It's going really well. As far as strength, are you one of the stronger guys on the team? Who who's the strongest guy on the team? Strongest? If I had to guess, I would say Olivier, but I really don't know how everybody's looking in lifts. All right, we're gonna go with uh, Keith Taylor with Kentucky Ford. I Kentucky Ford, Mark. I Kentucky today. Sorry, Keith. Old habit. Trying to meet you, Keith. There you go. Dante, I know you, you, you're a guy of faith, but how much did your faith play a role in your recovery? And number two, what did you learn through your process with your faith? How did it help you grow and that sort of thing? I think faith is a big thing, um, really in anything in life. Um, I think definitely in basketball. I think more so I was – put my faith more in basketball um, before injury. After injury is like, I had to focus on realizing that faith goes for all things. Like um, that, you know, all those things tying together and you got to go deep inside yourself to be able to um, push yourself through certain things. And those, the last two years, that was, that was a thing for me that I had to get through and go within myself on that. Guys, we got about three or four minutes left. I got a question from Keith with the Falmouth Outlook. And then if we got any other ones, uh, like I said, we've got a couple more minutes. So, Keith, go ahead. Hey, Dante. Hey, um, you had mentioned a couple of times that you're much better than you were a couple of years ago. What areas, specific areas do you just see that you've improved so much in? I think if you watched me a couple of years ago, I was more like – go, 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 go. Like, it wasn't really like, okay, I'm thinking about, it's not like, okay, his basketball IQ was bad. It's just, okay, maybe, maybe 
his mind just didn't move slow enough while his feet was moving fast. Or um, it, that that's the best example I could get. But now it's like, okay, like I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, just like, just like always, but my mind is moving slower. I'm in a lot better shape. Um, I'm in a lot better strength-wise, um, mobility-wise. I'm just in a better uh, space, better area, um, better fitness. Uh, just overall, I'm just, I'm just doing a, a lot better. Um, not, not to discredit what was, but I'm just, I'm, a, I'm very confident where I am right now. All right, guys, we got, we'll finish off with three follow-up questions. We'll go with Larry first and Jerry and then Jeff. Go ahead, Larry. Dante, tell me just a little bit about your impression so far of Isaiah Jackson. Early impressions, uh, he's nice. Um, he's going he's to be one to watch this uh, for the season and, uh, and throughout. Write it down. And Jerry? Obviously, Dante, uh, COVID is overshadowing everything. What, what, what's your uh, thought on uh, if there's going to be a lot of fewer fans? how that might be, you know, how that might impact any player's performance? Uh, I mean, I think if you ask any player what their – we would obviously prefer fans. Like, I think, I think that's an obvious, but it's like growing up loving basketball, you pull up to the YMCA, you pull up to the, uh, the courts, like just to play with random people. There's not really any fans there. I mean, so the love of the game is there. We love fans, but at the end of the day, we're playing the game we love. And I think I think that's the best way I can answer your question. Then wind it off with Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, Dante, I'm wondering, what is what has it been like having a year with Cal to kind of learn his expectations and, and, and what he – demands of players on the court before you, you know, ever play your first game for Kentucky? I think just uh, seeing the way he thinks, um, he's, he's on another level. And I think you can, you can see that by his accolades, um, his resume, like that those numbers don't lie. Like, they, they never lie, and I've got to see it up close, just the way he coaches. Like, he's not slowing down for nobody. He's not taking it easy on nobody. Like, if you're not doing the right thing, like, he's on you. Like, that's that's the difference. That's what – he has such high expectations of everybody. Like, nobody's slacking off.